come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday night, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total universe domination. You can help us out with that goal by going to wherever you found us. Wait, have you left a review yet? Yes, you. Have you reviewed the podcast or given Me? us a star rating on, yes, you. Me? On, Can I review my own podcast? <laughs> yes. Oh. Well, well. Anyway, if you do, it helps <laughs> us get... We uh, need to work on it a little bit. <laughs> Save it for when there's a really negative review to even it out. There you go. You have to. Uh, but all that stuff uh, seriously does help us get found by other like-minded folks like you. And so spread the word of the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast if you like what you hear. Spread the gospel. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Colin. Uh, Colin, what did we watch tonight? Tonight, we watched a movie called Popcorn. Popcorn. Directed by? Uh, Mark Harrier. Mark Harrier. Okay. From the year 1991. You guys Ooh. have been picking 90s movies. 90s. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I bet they haven't seen this one. Uh, I've been, no, like I you'd said, be correct. told yeah. Colin earlier, I've been looking at this cover art for 20 years, so <laughs> it's good to finally see the movie. I know. It's a pretty good uh, That's poster. That's good cover art, yeah. It is good poster. I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, somebody holding somebody else's face on a stick, or it's a skeleton holding a, per, a girl's face. face on a stick. You know stick. the, you see it, and you go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah Even if you don't know the name, you know the image. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tagline was, uh, "You buy a bag, you go home in a box." Mm. I like it. That's all right. That's I like good. it. You could, they could have done like a bag, body bag type thing, but that's fine. Bag in a box, it's good. Bag in a box. Bag in a box. Yep. All right, it's not so, the worst uh, we've heard on this show. Mm-hmm. Right. That's true. <laughs> um, well, this uh, so 1991. Uh, yeah, where are we at in 1991? Right. Set the set the uh, scene. Well, set the decade for first us. First grade. We're still in the 80s. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. I saw this. Well, this is one of those movies that played at the theater where I was working at. So I was 17, I think, in 1991. Didn't mm-hmm. have things flying around. It should have. No, I know. Yeah, it only played for two weeks. It kind of came and went. Um, and then I, it was discovered by people. If you've seen it, you most likely saw it on uh, VHS or, 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 or DVD, maybe. Um, so, yeah, where are we in 1991 when this thing comes out? Uh, horror had basically gone through its whole, um, hey, we're going to do all these colorful slashers, uh, Jason and Michael Myers. And then eventually Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger blows up and Freddy Krueger movies are still being made at this point in time. Mm. Uh, I think his shadow looms large on popcorn. Uh, There's an imprint. A little bit. Uh, yeah, Freddy for Krueger. sure. A little bit. Definitely. Uh, what? I didn't see that at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you get for Freddy Krueger is like basically said that slashers had to have some type of personality where they were quippy. Right? When they're killing you, they're going to be making a pun about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, I yeah. think that was like two to three movies in they decided that. Yeah, well, the, it with, didn't start that way. The first one no, is not quipping not, around. Yeah, the first one's not like that. So, to me, that's the worst thing about that franchise is how jokey they get as they go on. But it's funny how, like, in the third one, third one's really the one that cemented the Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, whatever, what we think probably now is the formula. But it's like he is quippy, but he's still doing terrible, horrible things to people, like tearing yes. out their tendons and you know, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the fourth one for sure, like, leans into it. And by the time we get to 1992, that's Freddy's Dead, right? Where they killed him, and that movie's a comedy. It's a straight up comedy. Once mm-hmm. Freddy Krueger, the character, started like making appearances on MTV and stuff, that's when I was like, mm, maybe we should not do this anymore. Like, this isn't scary. Like that at that point, like you've completely made the switch as an audience to you're just like you, you're not rooting for any of the human characters in those stories. You're just yeah, going because you like Freddy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you like Freddy, but that's why I think it was uh, Elm Street Four is the first one where it's like Robert Englund in mm. A Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, all the other ones were like, you know, you get all the other cast and then there'd be like, and Robert Englund as Freddy Krueger. Mm-hmm. But number by number four, I mean, that was like, you know, the, the height of his popularity and mm-hmm. that was 88. So, but there were other movies from this period um, 
like brain scan where they were trying, you know, I still haven't seen brain scan. Well, they would create like a character and it was like, they're trying to spin off like a franchise or something. Yeah. Like I was trying to think of horror movies that came out this year. And I like, could not think of like 1991. I couldn't either. Shocker was 89. Uh, but that was another yeah, one yeah. obviously trying to. I was going to say trying to do. Okay. This is a real yeah. dead zone for horror movies, isn't it? Yes, it is. This is what I've been trying to say forever. <laughs> 90s horror in the 90s sucks. Movies were okay in the 90s, right? Yeah. We had some good classic movies in the 90s, but horror like had a fear. really bad. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we were coming out of, um, I think what was going on is that we were coming out of the 80s and, mm-hmm. you know, all these kind of the, you know, the, the slashers and, and the monsters and the really creative stuff, uh, you know, creature-wise, predators and aliens and all this stuff, and the fly and somewhere in the 90s, when the independent movie movement kind of came around, the independent movement adopted those creatures like the vampires. They gave them, you know, then you had the heroin chic vampires. And we were like, well, what would it really be like to be a vampire? You got an interview with the vampire. And then we just got emo horror movies yeah, for yeah, yeah. a decade. But they had, mm-hmm. they're all deconstructionist, right? Yeah. They had to like start taking the horror movie apart and going, like, well, what is it that actually makes these things work? And then. Mm trying to bring them put them back together but now they're elevated horror right we're we're they're attached to they're more like real life relatable street level kind of stuff um popcorn is kind of um i mean it's a movie about movies in a lot of ways in many right? ways uh which kind of prefigures scream scream didn't mm-hmm. come out until 1996 um but there was west craven's new nightmare which yes was 90 Four? Four? Three, four? Yeah. Four, I think. And it, it's a self-reflexive thing. Uh, sure. Or a self-reflective. I mean, I guess you had Friday the 13th part um, six. Mm-hmm. Way back in 1986 where, like, the characters are aware that they're in a horror movie. What's six in 86? Yeah. Jesus. I know, yeah, it was way ahead of the I know, when the you curve, said that, I was like, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right at yeah. all. I know, it, you're right, but damn. Yeah. No. So this movie... Um, where did, where did it come from? Like, who had this idea? This movie comes from uh, a guy named Alan Ormsby. Alan Great Ormsby. Great name. He, well, he worked on a lot of stuff that... Uh, he worked with Bob Clark. Do you know who yeah. Bob Clark is? Yes. Who's Bob Clark? Uh, director of many classic Christmas movies, both uh, terrifying and... Um, uh, uh, Heartwarming. Heartwarming, sure, yes. <laughs> Shall we say. And the heartwarming one is Black Christmas. <laughs> um, but yeah, he did, I mean, he, he did those, he did the effects on this movie. Yeah, well, um, maybe a little more than that. Maybe um, a little more than that? Is he jumping in there to direct some shit yeah. when uh, somebody doesn't know what they're doing? I think this is a Toby Hooper, Steve Spielberg ah. situation. Uh, actually, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes on Popcorn that we'll eventually get to, but uh, Ormsby is a guy, he works with Bob Clark. They do a couple of movies called um, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. Yeah. Uh, Deranged. Anybody? I've heard, heard of it. it. That's the Ed Gein kind of movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. With the creepy old guy from Christine. I got to bring that yep. at some point. That's Tom Savini's first uh, makeup effects right, movie. Right, right, right. Uh, Death Dream is another one. Nope. Uh, somewhere, and then- Sounds Black, like a generic Black Freddy Krueger movie. Uh, it's like a Vietnam. The, the, no, yeah, yeah, just yeah, stop. Yeah. I don't want to. No, no, it's a pretty good movie. <laughs> Is it good? Creepy, yeah. Um, but Bob Clark directs these horror movies at the beginning of his career. Then he switches over to comedies, and he does Porky's. Porky's becomes a big thing. He does right. uh, a Christmas Story. Everybody, a beloved Christmas Story. Eventually, in his career, I think later, didn't he do like uh, Small Soldiers or something like Bob that? Clark was do Bob Small Clark? Soldiers? I'm gonna look I think it up. So, because he became the comedy guy, right? But in the beginning of his career, he did horror movies. Uh, Ormsby wrote a lot of those and then eventually switched over to directing. So Alan Ormsby was going to direct this movie. uh, And he directed all the movies within the movie. And then I think like a week or something later, he was fired and replaced by Mark Harrier, who was the actor in Porky's. Played Billy. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> That's one way to do it, sure. But I think in doing so, Bob Clark is also like kind of like overseeing this process. So this Probably. is, I think, according to the commentary tracks and all that stuff on this disc, uh, Bob Clark is like their day to day kind of on this movie. On uh, Bob Clark directed uh, a freak show classic, even though it's never been on the show. Rhinestone. 
Oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah, All yeah. Right. <laughs> in I, mean, 1984. I mean, hey, Stallone needs some more titles to maintain his right? his title, so we'll, we'll get there. We'll get From the, right the hip, time. loose cannons. It runs in the family. Fudge Derby. This is TV movie shit. Baby geniuses. Baby we get back, geniuses. We get back into the theatrical yeah, yeah, yeah. releases with baby yeah. geniuses. Uh, but this is the April, guy. Yeah, it's just forever. amazing to me that like that's the guy who made fucking Black Christmas. Super babies, baby geniuses too. Right. <laughs> You know, the Karate Dog. Was that like the last thing he? Is that the only thing he really tried hard on? Was Black Christmas? Because like all these other titles sound like, sure, I'll take the money. They don't sound like I'm gonna really show up and put in some effort. I would say a Christmas story. A Christmas I was gonna story. say, I, yeah, I think yeah. he did on a Christmas story. Breaking Point, Murder by Decree. Yeah, Murder by Decrees. That's that. Uh, it's a Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper oh, uh, story. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, Christopher Plummer. And James Mason. You're saying things sounds like. Sounds great. It's a pretty good uh, movie. James yeah. Mason yeah. being drunk. Which one was he? <laughs> he was Watson. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, he really is Watson. <laughs> He'd be chewing up the scenery and just yeah. taking over every scene. Yeah. Um. So this movie is about a um, group of college students at the University of California, I think, right? Nope. Yep. Who, uh, in order to fund their... Um, their class yes they put on an all-night horror marathon at the local theater yes right this is the framing the dreamland the dreamland theater that's right how convinced were you that maybe i'm going to spoil the illusion here? (laughs) how convinced were you that this was california oh i didn't it could have gone either way. I did not pay. I, mean, t- I did not look for a palm tree. I doubt it. I don't think we spent enough time outside no. to really tell one where. I saw not like a all. mountain range, so that's so accurate. Like, so it sold it. Yeah, yeah sure. Was, that, well, there, I mean, there was, was a there was yeah. a house facade that I was like, eh, that mm-hmm. could but be who California. Knows, who knows if that wasn't just grabbed from some stock footage somewhere? Who knows? Okay, but you were convinced we were in the United States. No, oh, <laughs> is this Canadian? Well, is this Canadian? <laughs> no. This is, is Jamaican. Yugos, is it Yugos? What? Oh, well, that makes sense. That explains the band. That explains yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, explains the band. And apparently Jamaican. when they were casting the extras, they didn't think about background extras. So they get to Jamaica like, yeah, we'll just call people in. Well, everybody's black in Jamaica. Right. So they're like, oh, this what? doesn't really, this doesn't pass this Southern California. Yeah. So that's why everybody wears masks. Uh, at the uh, so they can mix and match. Yeah. Brilliant! <laughs> wow, yeah. not a bad. So one. why I did was see Mario this, Van Peebles walking around in there? Why was this filmed in Jamaica? Is it a tax dodge or it's something? A tax dodge. Yeah, yeah it was cheap, cheap to go do it in Jamaica. I think there was some guy who met the you know some producer who knew who worked with the Jamaican government and was like, yeah, we, you know, trying to start a film industry. Sure, in, in as Jamaica. long as you get the band in there, then uh, yeah, you there's can a shoot wherever you band, want. Yeah. Uh, Who gets a lot of time? With like fourteen people C. in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's wonderful. They contribute at least three all near full performances. <laughs> near full performances. The of the movie. Um, so yeah, I mean, only the- Dragon Sound has performed more <laughs> in a movie <laughs> than this fucking band. Uh, that's a throwback callback to our Miami Connection episode. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> um, so this class is made up of uh, a number of faces, familiar or no to you guys? Yeah, familiar. Who'd you recognize? Toby. Toby. Yeah. Toby. That's Tom Villard. How yeah. do you know Tom Villard? I haven't seen him in forever, so I don't remember what one I've seen him in. One crazy summer. There you go. Okay. One crazy He's summer. He's one of the Stork twins. He's Bob um, Bob Gag Holtzwade's brother. Uh-huh. I love, I love Seems that like movie. Seems like I saw that guy a <laughs> lot back in like the 80s, yeah. 90s. He, he was, was in a, a 3D movie uh, called Parasite. Parasite, yeah. From the director of Metal Storm, The Destruction. Oh, of wow. Sandwich. Wow. Is there a Parasite in Parasite? Because yes. his titles <laughs> suck. Yeah, there is. And are not true. Okay. Mm-hmm. There was no Metal Storm. No. No. <laughs> metal Storm, no, no destruction. destruction. <laughs> Barely a Jared. There was Sin. a Jared. Sin. <laughs> um, he was also and, in oh, what was Grease his? 2, uh, Tom Villard. Really? <gasps> oh, really? Oh, Holly's Grease favorite. 2. Who was he in Grease 2? Hold on. I got to find this right. out. I'll Let's pull some bowls. Yeah. Uh, it's, he's not a main character <laughs> by any means. <laughs> Well, I recognized uh, only because I had a massive crush on her at the time, Jill uh, Sholin, right? The lead, the lead actress in this movie. Yeah, what else is she from? Okay, so the fact that you're kind of like, I don't know if I, you know. All right, so in the '90s, all right, this is the Jill Sholin pitch, right? Like, oh, all right. Jill Sholin, forgotten Hollywood, like uh, a big person in at least for horror fans, because she was in 
a movie called Cutting Class, okay. which I think was maybe Brad Pitt's first <laughs> role, yeah. right? She was uh, the stepfather. Anybody? Okay. The stepfather? She was the girl in The Stepfather? I've only seen that and like seen horrible remake. Uh, Nursing uh, the original. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, she was in Popcorn. She was in The Phantom of the Opera with Robert Englund. Didn't see it. She nope. was in the sequel to uh, When a Stranger Calls. She was in uh, When a Stranger, when stranger calls, calls Back. back. Didn't see it. Okay. Infamous so for movies that I have not seen. Jill Sholin movies. She uh, was in a movie called Babes in Toyland. There you go. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. She dated Keanu Reeves for like three years. She was engaged to Brad Pitt. Shit. Wow, good okay. for her. Yeah. <laughs> What's she doing now? Uh, and yet no one remembers her. <laughs> still acting. Yeah, I know. I know. That's why it's a yeah. crime. Does she do TV now? <laughs> Probably. Uh, she's somebody's mom in a CW I was, show. I, was just say, I, bet she's I, I bet you she's been on Riverdale. Probably. I'm probably. sure she's probably been on Riverdale probably. at some point. Uh, you're thinking of Mansion Amic. Well, no, I'm oh, just saying, like, too. all they those all levels, they CW. all end up on Somewhere. Riverdale. She was on everything. She was on <laughs> Gilmore Girls. She was on everything. Yeah, all the 90s has been, yes. no matter what level of fame, end up on Riverdale yeah. as someone's parent at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she'd be about that age, I suppose, right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Uh, so Jill Sholin oh another trivia thing uh, Jill Sholin was actually a replacement on this movie they filmed for I think like almost please say Winona Ryder please say Winona Ryder Uh, (laughs) her name is Amy O'Neill you Mm. would know her as the girl from Honey I Shrunk the Kids which girl the daughter the blonde one the daughter oh yeah so apparently she worked for a month it didn't work out they fired her they brought in Jill Sholin in like, you know, hey, you got to be on the plane like, you know, Monday yeah. or whatever. So they shot, they reshot all the master shots, but all the reaction shots are still people reacting to Amy O'Neill. Ah, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm glad they switched because I think she's annoying. Amy O'Neill? Mm-hmm. Well, apparently it just didn't work out. I don't know. I've seen her in two movies. Honey, I'm sure the kids. And honey, I blew well, up the kids. Isn't she on like the young <laughs> and the restless me. or something? Yeah, totally. I, we You're totally right. watch that. that. Yeah. Yep. Never miss a day. <laughs> called IMDb. Is that Never show miss still a on? Day. Is that one of those soaps that got canceled? Uh, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. Are soaps still on? I don't know. Soaps are still on. You know why we don't know? Because we all have day jobs. Yeah. That's why we don't know. I think there's at least one of them on. Anyway. So the class is run by Tony Roberts. Tony Roberts will all remember from his hair. Amityville 3D. No, we're all going to remember him from all the fucking Woody Allen movies. He was always Woody Allen's best friend in movies like Annie Hall. I can't remember if he was in uh, Manhattan. He was probably in Played Against Sam. I think he was. Mm. All right. So he's like uh, your New York serious actor dude who ends up working in horror movies. Of course. Which is where I always love it because that's what I like. That's right. Come into my world. (laughs) Tony Roberts. Uh, So he's the professor, right, of the class comes up with this idea. Actually, well, we'll have to come back and talk about spoilers later. Um, so they bring in um, Ray Winston. No, Ray, Win- what's that guy's name? Winslow? Ray uh, Walston. Uh, yeah. Ray Walston, right? Who's my favorite Martian. Not my personal favorite Oh, Martian. right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Who is your personal favorite Martian, Alan? <laughs> We've always wanted to know. We've I'm always around the table. I think we should go. <laughs> yeah. Favorite Martians? This question rarely gets asked. I know, right? Favorite Martian. I'm going to go with Martian, Martian Manhunter. No, who's the little guy from... Uh, Looney Tunes? Yeah. It's Marvin. Marvin Hunter. Oh, no, Marvin. Marvin. Martian. Marvin, Marvin the Martian. 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 Marvin yeah, the Martian. Yeah. Okay. Marvin the Martian's awesome. There you go. All right. Michaela, favorite Martian? If the Curiosity Rover counts... I would say the curiosity <laughs> room. That's fine. He it's sings happy Mars. birthday to himself, at least when he was still alive. They think he, he's probably dead now. Because a sandstorm blocked his battery from being able to charge. Thanks for bringing us down. Holly! I still can't get over the, the last words of, of the one rover. Oh, oh I know. It's not, getting dark. I don't cry yeah. in the podcast. It's getting dark going to sleep yes. now. I'm, <laughs> Jesus. I'm still not over it. <laughs> God damn! Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Marvin too. Marvin. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, then I'll go Marvin Martian Manhunter. Just all right. All right. Go. I'm gonna go with whatever that uh, eyeball that popped out of the purse in for Kim Basinger carried oh, around. Oh, it's my stepmother's <laughs> an alien. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go with that guy. That was from Mars. <laughs> no, sure. <my> st- okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. Well, they bring in Ray Walston, uh, who also. Oh, if you're a fan of the show Amazing Stories, anyone? 
Anyone? Nobody. That they're rebooting. No. They are rebooting it. It had a for nobody, a opening. but for you. <laughs> when there was a, a caveman sitting around a fire telling stories briefly, that was Ray Walston. Does it feel yeah. like that sometimes for you, Colin? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, now? right now. Right now, yeah. where we're all yeah. going, just staring at you blankly, going, uh, teach us. Yeah. He was in the stand. Anybody in the stand? Okay. Uh, anyway, Ray Walton. <laughs> Everyone just is, be silent. This movie has like a decent uh, cast uh, because they bring these people in for like one or two scenes. Mm. Uh, he comes in and he's this magician. Yeah, I thought of, we were going to get like something a little bit more from him, but he's just there to. One scene. Yeah, that's it. That's he weird. Gives, but it's a pretty good like little speech where he's got all the gizmos because what they're going to do is this horror movie marathon is just not, not we're, we're just going to show some movies. We're also going to do these kind of William Castle-esque mm. uh, in-theater gimmicks. Yep. Right? So the three movies, which actually you get to see like a pretty big percentage of at least two of them. They are. It's like a third of the movie. A third of the movie is the other movies. Yeah. Basically. I think this is the appeal of the movie to the people who like it. It's like it's a movie about movies, and it's also a slasher movie. <laughs> right. One Plus part it's pretty funny when they're the going other. into these bad movies, because they're bad movies. But well, they're purposely they're purposely made bad. What was the first one? Mosquito in, in 3D? 3D? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's wonderful. With uh, with <laughs> one giant uh, mechanical mechanical animatronic yeah. mosquito, f- quote unquote, <laughs> flying around. And, and the actors in it, uh, I mean, everybody knows what they're doing in that. They know they're making a they bad movie. fucking it's, nail it. It's great. I, think. I mean, it feels like you're watching them. Yeah, yes. or it yeah. came from Absolutely. outer space or something. Oh yeah, like, any of those movies feels the right dialogue, on. The dialogue, the performances, it's like if you didn't tell people, I think they would think maybe that this right. They just dug up because then you'll you'll start seeing like, wait, I know that actor, and they weren't alive for that movie to be that old. So mm-hmm. you know, this is new. This Luckily, was filmed I for this. Didn't recognize any of these people? The one, uh, the one guy, Corky. Uh, no, not Corky. Although I've seen Corky before. I don't know where, but I've seen that guy before. No, the the officer, the guy oh, who played huh? the army guy. I forgot where I fucking seen him. Washington on the phone. Yeah, him. I've seen him in some things. He's played a bad guy in some 90s movie yeah. before. Yeah. But yeah. Square jawed. Uh, I mean, it's just. Yeah. Call the army. Yeah. Call Washington. Because atomic testing has made mosquitoes gigantic. Right. And sucking the brains out of. Oh, <laughs> yeah. With this. <laughs> oh, that was wonderful. I would 100% watch this movie if it were. I heard, real. Yeah. I heard a saw sound when that <laughs> thing was going <laughs> through the roof of that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mosquito. That was great. Goes through the roof of this car that's driving down a And he highway. Starship Troopers, this dude. Yeah, and he <laughs> just just pierces into his head and sucks all <laughs> the air and blood you, out of him like a juice box. You will yep. not be able to convince me that this movie wasn't created just because he had all of these different ideas and wanted to put them together in a movie. Yeah. I think he found the props and decided he wanted to make a movie. You can't convince me otherwise. Yeah. You know, this the movie, whole movie was written around it. Yep. Holly, you weren't here for it, but this movie has like the same kind of like chaotic energy as detention like uh, it's not to that uh, not to that degree uh, it's much more um thought out than detention was but i get a the, headache like, anytime someone says detention the pace and the kind of like raucous energy of it is reminded me of detention you i mean, think detention's a shitty remake of this movie actually <laughs> less time travel in this movie yeah, yeah much less time travel but you get the whole bug subplot right so there's the mosquito movie and there's that whole whole story that happens in like two minutes of detention where that guy's got like the the fly arm or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, remember yeah. that? Yeah, you yeah. remember that yep. was a thing that happened in that movie? <laughs> gone. Yeah. That movie's that gone. Like that a movie, movie is full of videos. gone. I yeah. had it removed. Yeah, the way the way that Okay, I guess what I mean is the way that detention you, is, it, detention is a movie worth considering. Just for the, <laughs> oh, I boy. mean, we keep going back. To it, it sounds bonkers. It's it's detention is a movie that splits off into these I guess the similarity I'm seeing is that like detention splits off and we'll do a whole mo- movie's worth of content in like three minutes, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, and that's kind of what this movie's just, doing, right? Mm-hmm. There's so many like short little like yeah. subplots happening at the same yeah, time they like, get wrapped up immediately. It's you know? like they're trying to make it vignettes, but they're not vignettes. Yeah, like, that's how detention all. is. Yeah, that's exactly. exactly. How oh detention god, is. that's so frustrating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but detention moves like ten times faster than this movie. And um, only because there's has like a hundred like things going. Yeah, on. it has like a, a an obnoxious things. color palette and like uh, you'll have to go really, back. Yeah, and we actually did an episode yeah. on it. You can go back and listen. And to it's it. your fault, listener. Yeah, it was right. a listener pick. That was yeah, a listener they pick. That we do it. Um, Ooh. the other two movies they do well. Uh, uh, it's in the, oh. the mosquitoes in 3D, <laughs> but it's also in a in a. Uh, it does 
what was it? Percept? No, not Percepto. Emergo. Yeah. And it's not yeah. called that here, but the William Castle one that was the, the House on Haunted Hill where something comes out and flies over the audience. Here, it's the uh, mosquito yes. that comes out. My favorite joke from Mosquito was when they're going to, like, we got to drop the A-bomb. And they're like, oh, my God, get under the desks. Because mm. that's what saves them. Because yeah. that's it, what everyone was taught. It wasn't the kiss me dick. Or, no, it was, was a different movie. It was a different movie. It was, yeah, it was like, in the amazing. Yeah, kiss your what? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, best joke. That was the best Best joke. joke. The amazing electrified <laughs> man has a guy on death row who's given a third corpuscle. Yes. And survives oh, the electric Oh, God, chair. I hate that word. Corpuscle. That is one of the yeah. worst yeah. words. <laughs> Stop. As long as it's not a moist corpuscle. Mm, so, moist, he, crusty uh, corpuscles. <laughs> he, he, uh, oh, my corpuscles are crusty. <laughs> so he survives oh, the. You ever wake up chair? with crusty corpuscles? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> They're drying up right now. Oh. So this guy survives the electric chair, becomes electrified himself, and okay, wanders so around. Funny. This one comes with the gimmick of uh, what they call it. Um. Uh, what was it called, man? Oh. Shockorama. Yeah, because they basically build a 4D theater, which I don't know if you guys have ever been to one. They suck. Not yeah. fun. Where they're spraying water at you. And they shit spray water. Like they poke you in the only, back, and it hurts really bad. Oh, only like Disney when I saw yeah, Shrek in 4D. Wisconsin Dells yeah, has a 4D the theater, oh, yeah, a I'm very sorry, shitty sorry. one, yeah. but it has. I wouldn't one. mind experiencing it once. It, no, yeah, it's it not fun. fun. Once. Yeah, once. <laughs> I don't know. They blow the air in your face. Yeah. They shoot the water. water at you. Yeah, yeah they yeah. that thing that pokes you in the back. And you're mm-hmm. like, ah, what the fuck? And then your seat rumbles. And All what movie are you watching where people yeah. are getting poked in the back? Uh, I watched Speed Racer in 4D. People get tortured in that movie. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Do you guys not remember the scene where they put the guy's hand in the piranha I'm, tank? I didn't I, watch I, Speed I, I Racer. Did, yeah. Speed Racer. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, your options at a 4D theater are not usually real movies. True. Usually, they're like True. the museum type yeah, movies. That's what I saw. Yeah. So if you get a real movie, it's like. That's why I watched Speed Racer. It was either Speed Racer or a fake movie. So yeah, it was like Amazon Experience where you were going down. The, yep. Oh the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. yeah. I saw I saw a shark one that did yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but that one, yeah. So it's it's basically a version of the William Castle. Uh, uh, Tingler. Damn, what was it? Tingler. It was the one from the Tingler. Was that that wasn't Percepto? Percepto, I think, was the Thirteen Ghosts, where you had to wear the. The Maybe it was classes? Percepto in the Tingler. The shocks under the seats. Yeah. So there's a guy upstairs like pressing the buttons and shocking people in the audience. Mm-hmm. And the final one is a movie called The Stench, which is apparently a Stench. Japanese movie, apparently, yeah. which was missing that awesome like green slime opening theme song. Really would have yeah, it. it. Oh, that would have been good. It's all dubbed Shit. over. That's in Odorama. Odorama. Where they drop the uh, the the odor pill pellets into the tank. And, so gross. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I would. I'm not paying for that experience. No, Sorry. I well, don't. but in the in this movie, because I mean, a lot of the movie it takes place. Most of it takes place in, a theater. in the theater During when the they're movie. actually doing this. There's only like 20 minutes of setup, mm-hmm. right? Which we have to go back to and actually tell you the plot. Right. But these people are having a fucking blast. That's why I'm like, this is the movie theater experience that we don't get anymore mm-hmm. because now you can go. When a movie's playing, it plays at like three different times during the day. Mm-hmm. So they're not like crowding 600 people right. or 1,000 people or whatever. Like we got a you showing at 7 and a showing yeah. at midnight. You yeah. better get to the 7 and o'clock. Well, this is there. also a marathon, too, so it's a little bit different. Very true. Right. Yeah. The, you know, the um, the place in Chicago has that 24-hour horror movie marathon. The that music people, box. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, I think it's somewhere else now, but... Yeah, people come and they fucking camp out for that shit. Yeah. And it kind of, it looks like, a, you know, what you hear about, like, the Rocky Horror Picture uh, screenings. Yeah. People are throwing stuff. They do that for the room, to too. The yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Toast. Mm-hmm. All right. So those were the sequences directed by the original director, right? Mm-hmm. So the actual movie with mm-hmm. Jill Sholin, <laughs> right? Popcorn. She is a college student taking a film class. She is having these dreams. Uh, in which she sees a, she's like uh, seeing an altar and a head, a guy's head on a plate. He yep. talks. And He's a, got long hair. And a curvy sword. And a sacrifice. Blue strobe lights. I am the possessor. Yeah. <laughs> With an affected, yeah. So all this is kind of like. Voice kind right. of varies a lot in this, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Quite well, a bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, as they're putting on this show, they end up uh, uncovering in the. Uh, materials that they get a little roll of 35 millimeter film mm-hmm. 
And when they run it, it turns out to be her dream. Oh, did we say that D. Wallace Stone oh, yeah. is her mom? Is her mom? Her mom from E.T.? She's hardly in this, though. She has more scenes than Ray Walston. It's very true. She may have more scenes than she's Tony gone for. Roberts. I would guess she's gone for 45 minutes straight of the movie, many, if not oh, yeah. more. Probably, so yes. She was in a lot at the end, so she might. Yeah. yeah. She had her own little stake out at a certain mm-hmm. point in there. Yeah. What, what does this put her at? As far as our wall is concerned. Um, that's right, because... Uh, She's got to be racking them up. Long-time listeners will know that if you appear on at least... Uh, or if an actor is in at least three movies that we cover, uh, that uh, you will be put on the wall of fame. What? I don't see her on the wall. I'm looking under what? Wallace. Stop. I think it's organized the other way. Trying to D. D. Uh, um, uh, no riveting audio commentary. I don't. Sorry. No, that's, said, that's on Igor. He fucked up the oh, God damn it, so. Igor. Because yeah, what? We have done D. Well, we did Lords of Salem. She was in Lords of Salem. We haven't done Cujo. We haven't done The Howling. We did Critters. Uh, we haven't done House of the Devil. We did do Critters. Mm-hmm. So at least this would be. At so least this, three. If nothing so else, this, this gets her on there. Put her on okay. the Jesus. So I thought we'd done way more. Yeah, I know. Because D. Wallace was another Scream Queen staple from a generation earlier in the 80s. Yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, we get the explanation from Tony Roberts tells us that uh, what actually is going on is that there's a guy named Lanyard Gates who is like a Charles Manson, but with movies. He had a film cult. Yeah. Yeah. That's like what it seems the, like. Right. 15 years ago, he had a film cult, which I just love thinking about this. <laughs> That they they had a film. And he's been, like I would you've been the film, and you you've been trying to pull you could them together. Define this is a film <laughs> cult. We kind, we kind of have one. <laughs> you like you it because you're doing to this it. Yeah, are part of the film cult. Right. Drink up. Yeah. <laughs> oh yay! So we're not podcasters. We're cult leaders. Cult yeah. leaders. Ooh, yes. I like that better. It's not bad. I but love there's it. some. This is legal repercussions you from that. Either. <laughs> On our uh, oath, the oath, the the dry, uh, the whatever the the podcast film cult uh, oath, right? Yeah. Yeah. That actually, when you say it, you. Become yeah, indoctrinated that's very true. Yeah. yeah, that's our Dracula. That, that we We're gonna say that at the end of every episode. Yeah, pledge our allegiance to Satan himself. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, Lanyard Gates like ran a film cult where they basically dropped acid and made uh, movies, and everybody laughed them off the screen. And so he made this movie called The Possessor. And at the end of it, he killed his family on stage Mm -hmm. and then burned the entire theater down. Yes. Except. He didn't. It's possible that his daughter may have escaped. Yes. Okay. So that brings us into. And his sister-in-law? Shot him. That's right. right. She shot him. But she escaped as well. Yeah, she escaped. Okay. Yeah. Is Jill Sholin's character the daughter of Landon Gates? We're not going to tell you until the end of the movie. So, yes, she is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Are we saving that? So, okay. So nah. then this movie, the the A plot, right? If the B plot are these, um, the B movies, the B movies, that, right. uh, that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the A it's, plot. I don't think Sean gets credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I just invented B movies. The B movie. Uh, a plot is a slasher movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's like a, it's a goofy giallo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a goofy. <laughs> Instead of black glove killers, we get, well, I mean, the, how. He sort of has like a glove for his face. We don't find that there, for a yes. while, though. That's it. Yeah. He does. Face he's glove. got a glove. Yeah. He's got a glove for his face. That's he's kind of got like a whole like box of gloves for his face. Perfect. Yeah. Kind there of, it is. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, come to think of it, the first shot of the movie is the all of the masks, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So the idea, but we don't find that out for a long time. Yeah, wow, right? because like Even I said, that. this movie has a chaotic energy where it takes these big detours. Yeah, I mean that are entertaining as fuck. But by the time we get to the end of them, I'm like, wait, hold on, how do we get here and how do we find our way back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the general gist of it is that we think, because Jill Sholin thinks that mm. Lanyard Gates somehow survived the fire and he is here tonight in the auditorium. Yes. And so she's following him around for a little bit or somebody that she thinks is Lanyard Gates, always ducking out of frame, you know, mm-hmm. going upstairs and whatever. Uh, and this guy, there actually is a killer at loose Killing in the, the theater. Yes. Yeah. 
He kills uh, Tony uh, Roberts first in the in a, in a kill that I never thought I'd see on screen or describe to you now. Uh, he gets killed with a giant mosquito, Colin. How? Impaled. Impaled. <laughs> Impaled by with a giant, giant mosquito. mosquito. <laughs> with the proboscis? What do you call that? The pro- proboscis? You're right. It's called? Sure. I know that name. Sure. Yeah. The thing that... The proboscis. Know, its nose... Yeah, mosquito like the nose. snout, the mosquito snout. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Proboscis? The straw? I don't, I don't know. I don't know it's anatomy straw. terms. I know. No, no, insect anatomy. Straw bill. Yeah. So that's like a not bad, but not really gory, not really splattery. That's good. But it's something I have never seen before. It was yeah. new. And we'll probably never see again. It was new. <laughs> yeah, it's like getting killed with a marlin. Yeah. 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 We don't, we have we just don't that, see it. We? Somewhere. I've seen that. That almost happened to Tony Roberts in Amityville 3D, where the Marlin beak, that's probably right. not what it's called, no. comes <laughs> at you in 3D. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I've seen somebody killed. Oh, anyway. Yes. I've seen a shark impaled on the front of a, a boat. Yeah. yeah. We, we, that we, seems yeah. very recent, that doesn't it? We, we uh, saw it. Yeah. we don't remember what it's called. On the front of the boat, the, the, the proboscis. The, no, that's not it. the mast. The mast is the upright so pole that holds exactly up the, the sails. Same yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so the mast of the now. mosquito <laughs> impaled <laughs> yeah. Tony Roberts. Yes. Uh, so he gets killed, and then in a way that was totally avoidable too. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Again, he's going to jump out of the way. The, it's that's very Austin, slow moving. It's an Austin Powers moment. Yeah. Well, he's remote controlling the thing with one of those like I mean I don't do remote control cars or remote control you know airplanes helicopters. This is an insanely complicated uh you know remote control these guys have so good on you for something for that's on a track right yeah. you're like yeah. why yeah. why is it that complicated yeah yeah, yeah. apparently the head lifts the light i guess turned on, on yeah 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 uh he gets killed and then uh the killer goes after um who's next the guy in the wheelchair running the he's I going think- after the people who are running the gizmos yes i also think this is about the time we start seeing um masks getting made because he takes on Tony Roberts's uh, visage um, at a certain point, and you see him. Don't we see him putting his face in the mask yes. maker and taking it out and cutting things? Yeah, up? Yeah, that's and- how we actually know that it's a guy with uh, right. Because we see Tony Roberts. Oh, we see him making the mask, and then you see Tony Roberts. And you're like Wait, a little bit he's later. Dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, how's he here again? Yeah, yeah. So now we're on to the. He might be taking other people's faces. Oh, that's right. Because then he he lures the um, usherette. Girl, Tina. Yes. Tina. Yes. Who was in a league of their own. Yes, her she name's was. like Freddie. What's her name? Betty Sue. Is it Betty Sue? No. Couldn't tell you. It's. Uh, okay. I'll remember. Mm. All right. Real cool. Name. Awesome. Freddie something. Yep. <laughs> She's got three names. It's like Freddie Sue Mary. Freddie Sue. She's Winmore. Freddie. Yes. Something. All right. Yep. Uh, anyway, <laughs> she, yourself. it turns out, is having an affair with Tony Roberts. I like this scene because. It does play kind of like the killer didn't know that there was an affair happening. Like oh, yeah. he is dressed up as Tony Roberts and she's coming out of him and he's like, oh, <laughs> this was going on. Yeah. Like, how do I play this as I pretend to be Tony Roberts? I wasn't planning on this. Neither was my face. Yeah. Which comes off in her mouth. I'm like, why? So gross. Bites? So gross. Oh, that was. Ugh. <laughs> I just think the masks weren't made for kissing and it just stuck to her. Well, it was yeah. so brown it and it was like it wet. Like it had like yeah. a sheen to it. Like it was wet. It was gross. Ugh. It comes it off like, it's like, a, like string cheese or like, you know, really yeah. mozzarella. You ever see a, pe- yeah. Yeah, a pizza slice? A pizza commercial. Away? Yeah. You ever seen a pizza mm-hmm. commercial? That's Where what they lift like. up the slice and the cheese kind yeah. of just strings. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what it looked yeah. like, but it yeah. was brown. But not well, he does actually, he delicious. peels his whole face off then and then and we get a look at like what the guy actually looks like. Yeah. And was surprise, that, surprise, he looks like Freddy Krueger. I was trying to tell, but the way they edited it, I don't think they did this, but it wasn't peeling one makeup job off another, right? Because the way it was edited, it looked like he peeled off the outer one. They cut away from him. Yeah. They cut back and he they has did. the underneath. There's a lot of cutting yeah. away. Yeah. I'm going to pull this a little bit and then we yeah. cut away and then it's going to be different. I'm going to pull yeah. this off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of that. But he's a burned guy with, uh, well, he says, what, um, like staples. burnt eggs. Uh, burnt burnt egg eyes or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got like yellow eyes. He's got like little metal to hold his muscles in places where they should be. He's yeah. got like giant staples in his face. Yeah, yeah around his ears. Real. a metal mm-hmm. cage around his face, mm-hmm. like built into his muscle. It's a good look. It's a good look. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Yeah, I liked him better with the crazy yellow contacts and yes. do with the yeah. normalized. Yes. I get better. it. That's probably easier on the actor. Sure, sure. Yeah. They're sure. normalized. Um, he then, uh, kills her. Well, and he uses, he uses the usherette as a mannequin. 
yeah. Yeah. Just doing all that stuff. It's or he, amazing. And he's going like, yeah, he, uh, he went, he went back there. And, uh, There's a lot of just, gesticulation by yeah. the arms. But the She's wrists talking. are all limp and floppy and her this. head's like cocked to the side. Yeah. Bye. It's a sitcom gag. Yeah. He really is. It is. Well, this is where, because Jill Sholin is, um, so there's this guy, uh, what is <laughs> Mark. It? Mark. Always falling down. Right. This is the hero of the movie, the hero. Hero. Like, she's mm. the primary, the heroine, the final girl. Yeah. Uh, so he's like the, you know, uh, the dude hero of the movie. And this guy is like, well, is he? <laughs> no. I mean, he's there a lot. He's there. He doesn't I really mean, do he is. He, I mean, he literally like swings in at the end. You yeah. Know, hero style. So, but I mean, he still is. He is a completely ineffective hero, right? True. I mean, Although I suppose inadvertently he causes the uh, the he causes the killer's death, mm-hmm. but not like on purpose. And he does do the heroic Indiana Jones right. mm-hmm. swooping in uh, at the end of the movie. Yeah, but he's a klutz. Well, <laughs> yeah. he's a klutz. He falls down the stairs. He's uh, kind of an asshole. Yeah, right? a little bit. Yeah, uh, maybe more than a little bit. He's, I, a, little, he's, he's a he's kind of a misogynistic little asshole. Because I, I assume that they're dating. Right, this is the whole setup that oh. he, that they they have a relationship where it's not an entirely hey we're we're actually in a relationship because she kind of blows him off at the beginning of the movie and he shows up at the 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 screening with another girl yes mm-hmm. and then you know it's that whole thing where like okay I got to go out and you know go talk to uh, Sarah up in the booth about something or whatever. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, you know, some other guy like comes over and sits with his girlfriend. That's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> and then he basically follows her around and gets his ass kicked uh, several times by different characters uh, trying to solve, you know, track down Lanyard Gates. Right. Who they think is Lanyard Gates. Um, who else is in this movie or what other cast characters do we have? The wheelchair kid. The wheelchair kid is running the shock or whatever. Yep. And how does uh, how does our killer? Well, who is our killer when they come to him? And how do they dispatch him? Tina, who was just killed. This was is just the killed. Usherette. So this is yeah the usherette. So he's dressed up as Tina in her little usherette costume. Comes in, uh, straps him down, and effectively electrocutes him. Shaves when, his head. Shaves his head. Yeah, or at least it's part a, of it, a like a strip down the middle. Right, which is yeah. what they. This is what they did. Right, so they wouldn't start on fire. When they would and electrocute well, them, the no, it gives you uh, it's a more conductivity, I think. Uh, bare skin, mm-hmm. well, true, yeah. She because she puts that goo on the back of yeah. his head, too, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. and then uh, proceeds to electrocute him along with the characters on screen, which is a good back and forth because <laughs> she sets it up on his control panel. And it's like when that orange light lights up, that's you. Yeah. And you're going bye bye, and there's like, like a time five lights, yeah. yes. And so each time somebody on screen during the shitty movie gets electrocuted, another light goes off. So uh, every time somebody gets touched, you're just like, oh, we're getting closer. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's pretty funny. Um, this is where the uh, "kiss me, dick" line mm-hmm. comes in. <laughs> well, it's also pretty funny because apparently the jolt that he gets is enough to vaporize him. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, from the movie. He yes, complete. We see the the it's wonderful his, his chair uh, falling back against the wall. He's not right. Ready. I would have appreciated. I guess this wasn't. It's not the type of movie. I would have appreciated a uh, a skeleton. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that, that would have been, been really great. funny. <laughs> I love the smoking skeleton. Yeah, skeleton. I've seen like it a couple Fright Night or something. With well, the, yeah. I've seen it a couple more times. I love in movies where characters just turn into skeletons. Mm-hmm. As it's like a regular movie, but somehow they get scared or electrified or something like that. Like and in they Home just Alone. Turn, in Home Alone 2, yeah, in Planes, Trains, great. and Automobiles. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is great. Which is it too. fucking hilarious. Yep. I love when people just turn into skeletons yeah. for a moment and in the movie. And their hair's always it's standing my, yes, on end. They still have hair. Thing <laughs> and they're yeah. screaming yeah. as skeletons. <laughs> my favorite thing. Yeah. Does that love come it. from like old Walt Disney cartoons Maybe. or something like that? A, yeah. I don't know. It seemed like John Hughes really liked to do that, didn't he? It's amazing. Love it. Anyway. Well, it turns out. Oh, we can't forget to mention uh, Kelly Jo Minter. Uh, She was the candy concessions girl. Yes. Inductee on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. I know I've heard that name before, but I don't remember where. She was in The People Under the Stairs. Yeah. And this. Mm -hmm. And, well, I mean, most people of our audience, you probably remember she actually had a starring role in A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5. We haven't done that on this show. However, we did do The Lost Boys, and if you squint and look quick carefully, she is 
working at the video store where uh, the kid's mom. Yeah, worked. didn't we talk about how yes. like you guys were looking for her and yeah, her it was like cut. blink She's and you in miss the it? Opening credits. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So there you go. Three times on Saturday Night Freak Show. Hall of Fame. Kelly Jo Minter. That's a hall. Well, will we bring a Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5? Will then you put, put it on the wall. wall. Okay. Um, so anyway, it turns out <clears throat> that Toby, Toby is the guy who actually orchestrated Toby, this whole thing. Toby. 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 Charlie fucking Chan. Yeah. It's a good, uh, it's a good movie. Reservoir Dog. Yeah. Um, but Toby, Toby is played by Tom Villard, right? Because you're like, why did you mention Tom Villard at the beginning of this? You haven't come back to it. Because he's the killer, yes. it turns out. Tom Villard is Lanyard Gates. No, that's not true. No. He's, but he is the scarred guy. Right. So what? Okay, so here's my question. Would this have been better if it would have been Lanyard Gates, either A, back from the dead, or uh, he survived his own because he does dress up as a quote unquote Lanyard Gates character at some point. But t- I guess maybe tell me who uh, who is he playing? Who is this character? He is a burn victim from the fire from 15 years ago. Yeah, he was there in the now. Theater. Right now, he has to stop. This is the part of the movie that gets a little slow. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm pretty sure it's because he has to stop and explain this whole thing. His mom was also in the theater as part of the movie cult. So was he. She died. He got burned. He's not really Lanyard Gates. He's got to go through and explain this whole thing in an elaborate setup with Maggie, who's down there. And so the movie kind of really slows down at this point. Because <laughs> it's at this point where it's just like, oh, I have so much more to explain and do. And I'm just like, no, we need to be running towards the finish line right yeah, now. And he actually, he stops his explanation because he's got to go kill more people. Yeah. The stench is still going on. Right. His plan if is If they that, had cut out the stench. And this was the end. Right. They they could have. And yeah. I wouldn't have missed it. Wouldn't have missed a beat. It's very much like the Scream movies when the killer has to explain who they are. Yeah. Right? This feels, this feels Another like a lift from. <laughs> it feels, uh, yeah. Well, Scream Two feels like it lifts like a bunch. It really does. From this. Yeah, like, I was just saying the like third this movie. act it of really Scream does. Two is yeah. like the third act the of this whole movie. Thing, yeah, the, yeah, the it really Stable is. vision, and obviously. just like in Scream Two, you're like, I can see where this is going. Can we just get there, please? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's true. Like, Let's, it's true. Yeah, nope. I know. I get it. We're good. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like no. I gotta go kill two more people. Yeah, and do a few more things. You don't gotta though. Be right there. You don't. They could. have I mean, we could probably excise it from the movie right now and be like. It yeah, works because he doesn't actually. Uh, it's the whole thing. He goes to kill the one girl. She's like actually in love with his character, but doesn't know. Yeah, who he is. and then he dresses up as the one dude in the bathroom and, and pees, pees on his on leg. Guy's leg, yeah, didn't need it. Uh, it's just another. I think it's it's another opportunity for a kill scene. There's another That's scene it. early That's in really the it. movie that I have a problem with, like a big problem with. Like logically, it doesn't work at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, when D. Wallace is summoned to the theater at night. Mm. Uh, and she goes and the sign, you know, lights turn on and the sign that they have, the marquee says something about like a supernatural horror, horror thon, you know, coming yeah. soon. All the letters blow off of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it magically says possessor. Yeah. And I'm like, are we going for a Freddy Krueger kind of, she's dreaming kind yeah. of thing? Because if this is supposed to be real, then that implies that there's going to be some kind of supernatural magic to like, it's landed gates back from the dead right. ghost. But then it turns out that it's not. And then you're like, well, how did that scene happen? Like, right. what? Explain that scene to me. And I don't think it can be explained. Oh, I could. She goes in and then he kidnaps her. Right. And holds I could ex- on to her until the third act. I yeah. could explain the letters blowing off. I can't explain Possessor just showing up. Yeah. Letters could be easily because he's got that whole box of like magic stuff from the doctor. Okay. Who came in. So he could set it up as a uh, as a trick to blow them off. Okay. That's easily that's fine. All Possessor right. showing up, I got nothing for it. It does seem it's like lit when from behind he just Sure, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I'll take uh, that. Uh, yeah. yeah, see, yeah, okay. yeah, there's a way to get into it. When the letters are flying <laughs> off, it seems like they're all going right at her. Yeah. Like they're all it's targeting almost her. Comical. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, stop. Yeah. I'm just like, run forward five feet. Okay. <laughs> everyone, You'll be fine. Everyone in this movie just stands there and let shit happen right. to him. Everyone. The guy lets the other guy pee on him. Why yeah. are you standing there and letting someone pee on you? Yeah. yeah. I've never been that shocked to see someone dressed like me and been like 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but his and face. He would just was, jump out of the way. But his face was his face. Yeah. I think that's. I just don't want to get any people that look like me. But he yeah. looked down and saw the guy peeing on him, and then looked back up at him and just still. No, I agree. Him ridiculous. Like, I'm saying the shocking part is that they had the same face. Yeah. That's yeah. the shocking part. Not that he was dressed like him, but he looked exactly like him. But no, that's no excuse to let someone pee on you. No. <laughs> well, I don't think so. And you're so. wearing no. white pants, too. White pants. You got to yeah. be careful with that shit. No. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> that's the real tragedy. That's the real it is. Tragedy. White pants. It is. Yeah. That's the real sign of a psychopath. Wear white pants. And the dehydration. Yeah. Well, he's all mentioned. dressed up as what an Do you know uh, what? Actually, that guy deserved it. I take it back because if you wear white pants in public, you're, you're, you're asking you're for You're testing it. the universe. You are. You're saying. True. Come get me. Yep. Yeah, but he's supposed to pee on. You're saying to the universe, like, pee on me. He's in a straight jacket and all that, right? He's a crazy person or whatever. He's in a cage. Thing. Like, <laughs> yes, he's wearing a costume, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. But you wear white pants. You are tempting fate. You're saying, give me Good explosive enough. diarrhea. I have yeah. never done this. I know it was a big thing, at least for guys. In mm, I don't believe you. Miami Vice. <laughs> I don't believe you. No, you had a pair of white pants somewhere. No. Mm. Miami Vice was like, that was the thing about the fashions. They were, by the time they got to the Midwest, it was over. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't uh, stop a lot of people. Uh, um, oh, oof. So, We're going to find a picture one day, Colin. <laughs> it does not exist. Mm. I don't talk think to I've ever worn anything except jeans. Uh, and mesh shirts, apparently. Right. I've, try, try to I've find seen me you shorts. wear dress pants. Okay, I've that. seen it. Um, so Not anyway, the, the, the killer's plan here, right? If I follow this correctly, which I hope I do because he explains it in extreme detail. Yes. Is that he is going to, because he was killed or he was damaged, burned. Yes. And his he, mother was killed and he was burned. Yeah. He is going to restage the uh, the thing that Lanyard Gates tried to do, which he's going to show Possessor, and he's going to try and kill the family on stage. This time, he had to get Jill Sholin back. Yes. So And even got New Wallace Stone. Him. Yep. With the gun. With the gun. And in doing so, this is where I start getting a little fuzzy, but I'm pretty sure this is exactly what he said. Somehow, if he restages the murder that was intended to happen, that it'll turn out different this time, his mommy will still be alive, and he won't get burned. And we're just saying he's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I like her reaction. She's like, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, because what, I mean, at that point, what do you think? You got to appease the nut job who's trying yeah. to kill you, who's yeah. got you in the straight jacket, and then eventually the Iron Maiden. Oh, yeah. The dress Iron Maiden. Yeah. On the stage. Of course, the audience doesn't realize that this is. Uh, no, they're uh, all for it. Yeah. It's all a show to them. He actually gives them an option. He does. Uh, he pulls should, pulls the audience. Yeah. Kill her or let her live. And they're like, yeah, kill her. <laughs> It'd but be then, fine. Thank God Mark saves the day. Yeah. I'd say the mosquito saves the day. Yeah. It ends up impaling Toby. Poor Toby. 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 That's right. So who has there. more kills the... The main bad guy or the mosquito? Well, you said that you hadn't seen a mosquito kill somebody, and he got it two times in one Twice. Place. I know. Yeah. Man. I didn't think, think I'd see it once. I think... Th I'm trying to think. They might be tied. <laughs> <laughs> For kills in this movie? Oh, yeah. Right, because, I mean, how many people does uh, Toby end up murdering? There's no cops in this movie. Tina, ever shows up. Tina. Right? The person working the shock... Thing can't remember oh, yeah. Yeah, their name. The wheelchair, Franklin yep. Jr., yep. Mr. Davis, the yeah. instructor. Okay. Okay. All right, and so it comes the out. dude to who, pees, who leggy peed on. Yeah, so Toby okay. wins. But Toby still. four, mosquito yeah. two. Well, still to his credit, Mark, the ineffectual hero, he does uh, put together who the killer is. How's that happen? I don't remember. I don't remember. It's gone. He gets was a lot. Somehow they're looking for. Uh, one of the oh, cast members. I remember. Because he goes to his house. Yeah. But, yeah, oh, that's right. This is why so, this movie so took so his, long. His like, his date at the movie theater was like, I saw that skank. She left with Toby. They went to his house. I saw I heard them talking about it. Oh, sorry, the hot blonde yeah. crazy. Yeah. And then the, the nurse knew exactly where he lived because she was obsessed with him. She loves so him. he went to his house looking for uh, Sarah. Yeah. He goes to a house. That's why. why yeah, because Sean, happen? you reacted when they said that. They were like, oh, let's go to this house. And you, you, Sean, you were like, no, let's. Like, we don't nope. have time for that. Don't need it. Let's go. <laughs> That's right. If Blumhouse made this movie, they we kept it done. in the theater. Yeah. yeah. We're done. Never venture outside the theater. We don't what have we the budget. from the boy? Who's in the same There's location. a guy there. 
They're going through yeah. Toby's apartment. The, Toby's a landlord. maniac. It's his landlord. Yeah. His landlord. He's an actor. But this is a guy that you got to cast. See, this yeah. is the thing. You this gotta, is a lot you of build effort. Build this set, or at least find a place. You, gotta, you didn't have to build it. You just got to fill it with all the yeah. shit that's yeah. in there. Yeah. And then, of course, he has because all killers do this. I mean, God knows I do. Somewhere in the house, there's big framed uh, newspaper, newspaper clipping yeah. that it. You know, like all you got to do is look at yes. it. You're I need to be, be like, reminded of my torment. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking that'd be a really great like art installation in your house to have like like a obsessive wall where it just looks like you're a conspiracy theorist or something. Yeah, with the red yeah, fantastic. With yeah. all the red uh, thread all over. But the what if you I make it? I'm like, not going to do that while I'm currently dating. Like that's not. I won't put it up you, now. But what if you make it something really stupid though? Right? Like right. the content yeah. of it is really dumb. It's really like stupid. uh, <laughs> like um. It's uh, McDonald's that have working ice cream machines locations, and like yeah. you're tracking all the ones that right. you know you can get ice cream at. Yeah, you're not like following. You know? Yeah, Nothing yeah, exactly. creepy. <laughs> Nothing creepy. Right. Following the McRib around the country. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Is this like from a distance, it would look terrifying. And you get up close, you start reading the newspaper you're articles, like, and you're like, "Wait, right. the McRib is bad. Is this the McRib? <laughs> are you are you tracking the McRib? <laughs> Yeah. This see, I, I, I think, think you should do it. Take a drag I think like, that makes you a more interesting person. If you all right. That. Now that we've done that, all right. I, that, yeah. I would do that. Yeah. That right? would be great. So since you're get something stupid, <laughs> they're just like you're insane. <laughs> but only about McRibs. But it's in Winnetka right now. You want to go? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the soy sauce is in Madison. We can stop by on the way back. <laughs> but is that like a thing you can't get? What? Are you the soy sauce. About? What? The t- yeah. The McDonald's soy sauce. The Szechuan sauce. That's Szechuan it sauce. That's oh, it. It's Szechuan sauce. Szechuan sauce. Right. Szechuan sauce. Right. Yeah. I was like, soy sauce. Jesus, you were really yeah. sauce. on me and calling my bluff there for a second. You're just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, because soy sauce, sauce isn't hard to come soy by. Soy sauce. Soy sauce. Chicken in McDonald's? Sauce. Sauce. What are you talking about? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Back on track. Yeah, that's right. So Mark returns, somehow breaks into the theater, causes the you know uh, mosquito to impale Toby. Yeah. He's dead. Uh, Good and death. Then basically, yeah, I mean, that's it. Nobody freaks out and runs out of the theater. Or nah, like that. Not that Everybody kind of kinda, movie. Do they applaud? I can't remember. Maybe they do. Maybe. But, I mean, it turns out that uh, Jill Sheldon's uh, mom is not her mom. Dee Wallace is not her mom. That's actually her aunt. Yes. Who's been raising her because her mom was killed by Leonard Gates. And uh, she survives. And so, like, her family survives. Uh, that's like a win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is it's a win. All the you know, friends are dead. It's, it's a win. It's a win. Yeah, but he, she didn't really know them all that well. Just class. Okay. Yeah, just right. classmates. Yeah, just classmates. Yeah. It's fine. They come and go. The yeah, right. boyfriend character is still alive. Mom's still alive, and uh, you know she's still alive. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, that's the most important. She'll get new classmates next semester. That's exactly it. Very yeah, true. Next year <laughs> for popcorn new. too. Yeah, mm-hmm. which never, unfortunately, unfortunately, materialized. This yeah. movie was put out by some company that I think I can't remember what it was called. It was like Studio Three releasing. Or something like that. <laughs> oh, I yeah. think that Studio Three may have put out Rich Girl, also starring Jill Sholin. Oh. Who would have thought? That's right. I remember seeing the trailer for this movie, and it had music in it. By a band that I followed way back in the day, which was a studio band. This is what I found out later. So that tells you about my taste in like the late 1980s. <laughs> yeah, I think we knew. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> this is again why we were going for white pants. Yeah. We know you. Uh, so that brings us to the end of popcorn. I think well, I'll so. tell you what. So, but what we're going to do, we, 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 we've been cribbing our, our, hedging our bets about, uh, and we really didn't talk about the fact that Toby, if you go back and watch the movie, then everything is his idea. Uh, right? I mean, he is playing it off. If you're watching yeah. it, it's like he's always not there when the killings are happening. He's always making up excuses why he's gone. He does disappear, and he's like, I got locked down and had to jump over a fence, and I'm going to attack yeah. by a dog, and now I'm back in here. And I found this film. Where did the film come from? I don't know. What right. are you doing? How come, you know? I mean, he's very. Makes sense. I mean, it's like blatantly obvious. Right. The second time around. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we're going to blatantly tell you. <laughs> obvious. I saw it the whole time. Did the movie work on you? We're going to have to find, we'll find out. out. Stay tuned, listener, because we're going to answer some of your mail, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to find out if the movie worked for Sean, Holly, and Michaela, uh, and, and would they recommend it. So, first of all, we're going to summon our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Thanks, Igor. 
Thank you, sir. He's got like masks on masks on masks today. He's got like the whole theater's worth of masks on. Just fall off his face, though. Yeah. They do that melty thing when he kisses. They don't do the ear thing. Other like, people so he can flap that, his ears around. Oh, that, that, that oh, was, I that was about that. really that's, unsettling. That's not a mask. That's goofy. He's just flapping. That that's whole, fucking goofy. <laughs> that whole montage at the end where he's putting on the different faces. I, I did of, not like I it. Of, I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I kind I, of enjoyed that. I was bothered by how well they all fit on that actor's face. I was like, this they all kind of like are perfectly sculpted to his face. And that yeah. was a little disturbing. Well, because they brought back all the actors. All, it's all the actors. I, yeah. all the actors I know. Coming but in with the, I know. I'm saying how they fit on that oh, actor's particular uh, face, like how well crafted they were for him to wear was a little disturbing. All right. So that was uh, in popcorn which we will talk about here in a second but first of all so here's how you can get a hold of us and join the freak show family for writing in for igor's mailbag you want to follow us on facebook facebook.com slash saturday night freak show at twitter at sat freak show you want to email us saturday night freak show at yahoo.com or you can get a hold of us on instagram saturday night freak show about popcorn adam kaler writes in and says i remember really looking forward to seeing this one and i did enjoy it but I like Tom Villard so much as Clay Stork in One Crazy yes. Summer that I had trouble seeing him as a killer. Oh, great internet radio superstars. Do you have any horror movie villains that you had trouble envisioning as a baddie because you saw them in something else? Oh, my. Ooh, that's a good question. If only we'd known this before being asked the question <laughs> so we yeah. could probably think about it yeah. and not have dead air. Um, I agree. <laughs> ooh, people. Who did... Oh, that's a good question, goddammit. Mm. I'll tell you, one that I thought was miscast was, I remember a movie called, this is maybe not the answer you're looking for, I remember a movie called 8mm, where a character, which stars Nicolas Cage, yeah. and the movie is supposed to be about like this normal guy who is brought to uh, kind of uh, a, a revenge killing, mm -hmm. and because I thought maybe we needed to have a, a character that we've never actually seen kill somebody on a movie before because it's Nicolas Cage. Mm. I was like, well, I just don't feel it the same if, if it would have been like Matt Damon, mm. you know, or somebody. <laughs> somebody you else. don't believe Matt Damon's killed someone? <laughs> Has he killed? Well, I mean, this is before Jason Bourne, I suppose, right? I, I mean, I'm saying in real life, too. I you mean, know what, though? He I, has that short man rage that I could see him strangling <laughs> someone. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. I, have, I have a couple. Keanu Reeves and The Watcher. Yeah. Oh. I don't. I don't buy that one. And uh, Laurie Metcalf in Scream Two. Oh, she, she's perfect there's, in Scream Two. No, no there's I problems with that. I couldn't look past it. There's, there's problems with that too because like ah, she's perfect. We're supposed to believe she's lifting people and hauling them into yeah. vans. Are you fucking That's kidding true. me? That's no, true. that was a big problem. I, but I couldn't. Look, I know she's great, but I still couldn't look past it. Yeah. That's I have. I've been able to since because we've seen her in more things. Mm. But at the time, I couldn't look past. You know, before I saw Copycat, I could not picture Harry Connick Jr. as that <laughs> as that fucking. Right. It's true, but we when you see it, once you see it, you see it. Ah, that's the first Sorry. scene of the movie. I know, I know, but it's like, yeah, you're so right. So did it, and you know, Randy dying in Scream yeah. Two. I'm that's sorry. gonna fuck some people up. We all did it. <laughs> okay, I don't care. The first scene of Copycat is Harry Connick Jr. That's true. There's yeah, the yeah. open uh, of the it's movie. in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's not a trailer. secret that he's in that <laughs> no. movie. Yeah, it's but, true. but the Nicholas yeah. Kid. Okay, so uh, did you I have can't one? think of one. I could never, not off the top of my head. Right. I have to go back we'll through every back movie I've ever seen. You have to remember nope, that it's not going to happen. All right. uh, Jacob Cotner writes in about popcorn. He says, I've seen this movie multiple times and I own it, but I can't for the life of me remember anything about it. Kind of like Phantom of the Opera in a movie theater? I guess that's my review. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some similarities. Uh, Andrew Bradford writes in and says, been a while since I watched it, but I remember it being a decent flick, particularly for a Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Teresa Ann writes in and says, I have yet to see this movie, so I'm intrigued with this episode. Well, we hope you uh, stick with us. This might be a hard episode to listen to if you haven't seen the movie. That's right. A lot of uh, you know, mental visual theater. There's yeah. just a lot in this movie, too. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Handsome Jansen says, I've never seen it, but as a kid, the VHS cover freaked me out. I'm sure it's yep. quite tame. Yep, 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 yep. I mean, that usually is how it goes. Yeah. Right. It's, I mean, it is called popcorn. Mm -hmm. Popcorn. Come on. And Dom Cree says the tagline reminds me of a bad imitation of chopping malls where shopping can cost you an arm and a leg. <laughs> it is like the sequel tag. tagline to that. Yeah. yeah. Well, because that also has a bag. Mm -hmm. I think of an arm and a leg. All right. Which uh, doesn't happen in that movie. That's right. But you know what does? 
laser blasts and people uh, blowing yeah. up. Robots. Robots. People exploding. People, people exploding. fucking on store mattresses. Yeah. Right? A lot of people <laughs> fucking within five feet of another couple fucking. In a store. In a store. Yeah, on a mattress. Yep. Yeah. Mattress store. While people watch TV. Mm-hmm. It's it's weird. Yeah. It's also only like eighty six. Go listen long. to our chopping mall episode. Chopping mall. <laughs> uh, about was it last week? Uh, no, two weeks ago we did the boy. Mm. Uh, Peter Gatt says uh, apparently he watched the boy. He said that was awful. I mean, <laughs> I can see that. Sure. Uh, Maya Madsen writes in and says I'm agreeing with Holly. I had a good idea where this movie was going, but the way the story built left me second guessing myself, and that kept me engaged. I also like the comfortable old. Haunted house feel. And with the two appealing leads, it's a kind of a feel good ghost story. Yeah. Until shit gets real, of course. Hard left turn. This sheri- series should go silent. I just saw number two. My <laughs> life would have been uh. better without it. <laughs> she also says we should watch a movie called Pin someday. Pin. Huh. Pin. We'll have to okay. look into it. How was number two, Colin? Movie. Yeah, you saw it. That's the only member who saw yeah, it. I did go see The Boy 2, and you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, is that your letterboxd review? Just yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, right. That's it's right up there with. Uh, <laughs> there is one that I did that for. It was just yeah. like I watched it, so you don't have to. Yep. Um, <laughs> I think my angry letterboxd reviews are always better than my like. I, I really love it. Yeah. yeah, I have more to yeah. Say the middling ones are just like, like well, yeah. where they're passionate, you're just like, nah. Yeah. I think well, I was so mad when I watched uh, Happy Death Day too that I immediately went on Letterbox and I like. I think I gave it like one star and I just wrote in all caps, this is not a horror movie. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's what I was so mad yeah. about with that movie. Yeah. It's uh, science fiction. Mm-hmm. Michael Whitaker writes in and says, oh, he's talking about, uh, what's his name? Rupert Evans. Mm-hmm. The, the guy from The Boy. Mm-hmm. He says, now there's someone I thought we'd never see again. Grant Parrish says he's the white lighter on the new charm show as well. Oh, is he? Oh, huh. There you go. What Good the fuck is he talking? What's the white lighter? I white have lighter. No idea. It's something in charm. Right. It is a character that the guy from <laughs> Sleepwalkers what? played in the original charm oh, show. Oh, I know who that is. Uh, I never got into charmed. Yeah, me neither. No, we all discussed this. Charmed is my show. You guys are all watching <laughs> Buffy. I yep. was watching Charmed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. He's a white lighter. Oh, that's good to know. Uh, well, Grant Parrish also says uh, the boy would have been better. It would have been a better movie if breaking. OK, this is more spoilers for the boy. <clears throat> he says it would have been a better movie if breaking the doll had released some sort of grown up Brahms fire zombie instead of the twist ending that was otherwise presented in the film. I'd be up for fire zombie. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Yeah, I kind of wish at least they would have like fully unmasked him at some point. If nothing else, what? right? We never got that, yeah. and you don't get that in the sequel either. Just FYI. that's stupid. Isn't it good if they? What if they fucked up and they lit a fire in the thing, and as they're being chased around in the climax of the movie, he messed up and accidentally tried to come out through the fireplace. And was well, on we fire said there and, should have been a fire uh, at the end of this movie. Yeah, there should. Yeah. Be so disappointed. Yeah, we need to see the original. Yeah, why screen. wasn't he literally smoked out of his house? Yeah. 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 Was there a fire I've, in the script? Oh God, I feel like the they couldn't afford it. I feel like the the movie that was supposed to be made would have been so much. I better. know that script it was so wild. Much well, Simon Carter says I waited the whole episode of the boy waiting for Sean to try saying the, the boy. boy. What the boy? There you go. Not bad. But he says my favorite <laughs> quote from the episode was, I want to fuck in front of ghosts, god damn it. <laughs> Which I think was Holly. Probably. Did I say that? Did no, you? I think, I think Sean said it. Oh, it was Sean. Yeah. Okay. Who's, uh, and Sean uh, Simon says, this can only be a quote from the freak show. That's <laughs> true. I mean, yeah, you're not going to get that anywhere else. Uh, I, mean, I, I, like might- how, I think Colin's like, that was definitely Holly. I, can't, I hear it in <laughs> Holly's voice. She just wanted to go to the house. Well, she wanted That's to right. be in the house she, yeah, and be, have that job. I want to go to the house. Well, I want to fuck in front of ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. Holly's that little hoe that likes ghosts, right? <laughs> I mean, there was. We did go on that whole thing about you like wanting to yeah. sit the ghosts yeah, and yeah. never letting no, you go and everything. You're not far off. Okay. <laughs> well, there it is. Uh, so <laughs> we're done. Yeah, we're going to tell you what we thought of popcorn tonight's movie. We're going to go around the table. We're going to start with uh, John. Hi. What did you think of popcorn? Uh, popcorn. Somebody said in the review um, that it's like I, I watched this movie before, but then immediately forgot uh, what it was about. And I'm pretty sure like that's this movie. It is perfectly entertaining. I had a good time. Um, there's a lot of. 
I said during the middle of this movie, it feels like a really good episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? And I'm pretty sure that's the highest compliment I can give this movie, um, because I love Are You Afraid of the Dark? Um, it's, it's fun. It's goofy. I like the whole, we're putting on a show in a theater vibe to it. Um, I've always wanted to like run an old theater and just show old movies and shit and sit up in the balcony and then like run the lights and just the lighting of everything around so there. Fun. We I know. run a movie theater. We should. I would love to. <laughs> and when we're rich one day, when we retire, we'll run a movie theater. Um, I've always wanted to, um, this kind of vicariously fulfills that for me um like i said it gets a <clears throat> excuse me uh we get a tad slow uh near the end of the movie when our killer starts monologuing about just shit and so it kind of lost me a little bit there um it started to slow down when i thought we should be again ramping up and getting to the end but um i had fun uh i thought it was a uh, i thought it was a very good movie um Again, by tomorrow, I think I'll probably forget most of what happens yeah, in this movie. I think we've already forgot a lot of it. I think so. <laughs> I think it just immediately goes out. But I don't think that detracts, because then you just like, I don't remember this movie. I'm going to watch it again. I think it maybe gives it the rewatchability uh, part of it. Um, based on what Colin said, I'd like to know like all the behind-the-scenes shit that has gone on with this. And looking at the special features of this, it uh, looks like they have plenty to talk about on there. There's like a 57-minute... Yeah, but I basically just told you. You did. Well, fine. Um, <laughs> I saved you 57 minutes. No, that's fine. Um, but uh, I enjoyed it. Um, uh, after, like I said, one, looking at the artwork for 20 years, it's finally nice to be able to check this off my list as I have finally seen Popcorn. Uh, I recommend it. I had a good enough time that I think you should watch it and that you'll enjoy it as well. Holly. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about this one. There was some... Kind of like Toby was before he got attacked by that dog? That's right. A little bit. <laughs> Yes, that's right. That's right, Sean. Um, like Michaela was saying earlier, and she compared it to detention. Like, granted, I was not here for detention, but you said it was kind of like jumbled, kind of that. Yeah, there was there was something about that. It's kind of jumbled. And it's a little distracting. Like you don't really know what's happening. Like you know what's happening, but you don't really know what's happening, and it's kind of distracting. Um, and then there is a solid start to this movie that is just campy stupid humor that's not funny it's just very like at one point i was like this is a horror movie right because it goes on a long time before we get to anything horror like oh that's and the cute montage of them setting up the yeah the festival or cleaning the theater it goes on a long time when they're yeah, like in class it's and they're getting it's the theater. full length of a song yeah I feel like a Jamaican it's, song. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like it's even more than that. A it's full just, Jamaican there's, song. There's a lot that happens before we get to any of the the horror stuff, um, but and it just feels like there's there's a lot of that. There's a lot of with the I guess it's the I guess it's the a the a plot is a lot is it's very slow. I don't know. I'm just. Eh. <laughs> Like there is, there is some good stuff, you know. I like the mosquito impaling somebody twice, and there's some decent kills. There's some, there's some gross parts, you know. There's something about latex masks and stuff and prosthetics that is just kind of icky. So there's with all the mask stuff, it's just kind of gross. Um, so there's some, there's some stuff that I like, but I don't know. It's there's a lot that's really slow. I don't know if I'm gonna. Rec- I don't think I'm gonna recommend it. Because I think it's very forgettable, and the slow parts don't really make up for the good parts. So no, I don't think I can recommend popcorn. Michaela, you know, Holly, I'm going to need you to spell it out for me this time, because I'm simple-minded. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there was a line in this movie, I don't know if you guys remember, because you see, you're forgetting everything. I'm simple-minded. <laughs> see, I already forgot about yeah, that. Right on the 50, that old 50. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. you guys all <laughs> laugh at it. <laughs> simple-minded. Uh, I don't understand why you guys keep saying this movie's forgettable because I feel like I'm never going to be able to forget <laughs> this movie. Like, I understand it's jam-packed with a lot of stuff, but, like, you guys are going to forget a movie where a mosquito impaled I mean, people twice? I'll like, that. you know, I'll like, remember that part. Um, I, I were, so once we got to the, the montage of we're getting the theater ready and that goes on for the whole length of a song, um, during that, I was remember thinking, I have no idea what's happening, but. I'm on board. <laughs> like I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm into it. I'll, I'll just go wherever this takes me. <laughs> um, and like I did compare it to detention and like, th- this is like a fraction of what detention dishes out, but like just in, it's kind of like, it's really vibrant and kind of almost to the point of being obnoxious at times. And mm-hmm. it's very raucous and like a loud and just a high energy chaotic movie, but it does things I've never seen before. It takes chances. It does 
weird things. It has a lot going on. It does have slowdowns when it doesn't need to have them. But the first two acts are really tight and solid, I think, even though they do take huge detours. I Whatever. I'm always on board for, <laughs> for stuff like that. At least it's trying something, you know? The effects were cool. They were really gross. It just, yeah. And, like, the B-movies were all really entertaining, I thought. Yeah, they were. Um, so I would definitely recommend it. I'd definitely watch it under the influence. It helps a lot. <laughs> it's like, this is made to be watched under the influence because of the the crazy pace it moves at at first. Um, definitely got to watch Popcorn. Uh, I, yeah, I can't believe I'd heard of it, but I didn't know anything about it. I'm kind of surprised that this isn't more of, like, a cult hit. But... It's Definitely like, recommend it's it. It's like an underground. It feels, but like, like w- way underground. Yeah, it must yeah, yeah. be. I mean, there are because uh, Jill Sholin actually on uh, one of the the documentaries mm-hmm. says at conventions, most people, you know, the work that she's done, most people either come up for the stepfather or for now popcorn. Hmm. You know, but the ages are different. Younger people, popcorn. Yeah. Older people, stepfather. But Colin, what did you think of popcorn? Um, well, I brought it, so I mean, I'm going to recommend okay. I was gonna it. Say, so, I'm, I'm like, hopefully you hate this so I can have yeah. this Blu-ray you got here. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a Synapse put out. Yeah. It's like a beautiful steel, steel book. Steel book. So, yeah, like a beautiful a popcorn? Two, like, uh, what's uh, happening Blu-ray. in the world today? Honestly, I'll probably yeah. buy it. Steel book. Um, the, uh, I think, well, okay, so I mean, like, I'm uh, 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 predisposed to this movie, right? Because of its worship of movie exhibition right it's a movie that is that takes you up in the projection booth it takes you behind the scenes of show of show business um i think that's what appeals to me more than the slasher plot because yes. the, the slasher, atmosphere is fantastic yeah 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 the 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 slasher plot is the weakest part of this because again i mean if you're breaking it down it's like Okay, so he's a victim of the guy, you know, Lanyard Gates. He's, Lanyard Gates isn't actually here, you know. Yeah, my brother's sister's cousin. Right, that's friend. what it feels like. Yeah. You know, it's kind of one of those deals, and, like, his motivation is like, what? Oh, it's crazy. That is <laughs> not good. It didn't, you know, I didn't feel it. it didn't, I didn't buy into it necessarily. I think Tom Villard is good in it. Yeah. I think he's another thing that I think you'll remember later is him wandering around on stage at like full, you know, blast volume, screaming at people and all that and that scarred makeup. Um but the uh and I think uh you know uh the structure of the movie, like the first like twenty minutes are that's I think almost in some ways the best part of the movie. It's the setup. We're gonna put on a show, here's how we're gonna do it. You're breaking it down. They're getting all the props. They set the thing up and then once it starts rolling into the personal story of our heroine, it starts to get a little murky. You're like, okay, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to trust you that you know what you're doing because it sounds, it feels kind of like you don't, you know? And ultimately I think they didn't really land that, but uh, some of the kills are, uh, you know, interesting, but not really splattery. Cause I think that was another byproduct of the 1990s. That was really when uh, the ratings board was, you know, I don't even know if the ratings board was clamping down. I think the ratings board clamped down on movies in the 80s and in the 90s studios were just like they just didn't try to get to that point. They were just just playing it safe. Yeah, that we can't really. So you're doing a like a kind of a toothless slasher movie. Um, But, you know, like I said, from the point of view of just being interested in movies and all this stuff, the 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 recreations of these uh old 50s movies there's you know they do like the atomic monster movie they do like the guy created by science movie mm. and then i don't know what the hell the stench was supposed to be just like the imported foreign dubbed uh yeah. you know like because we really the, the stench is the one we see the least of and the possessor we do see some of that is like a it's not really like an italian movie it like in a french movie or some kind uh. of um you know, just really one of those, what do you call it, like esoteric kind of, where you yeah. know, do a bunch of close-ups on people's eyes. It's a non-sequitur of a movie. <laughs> yeah, the art film. Mm-hmm. Um, but those are like, at least that first, you know, Mosquito and the Amazing uh, Electrified Man are like spot <laughs> on. You yeah. know I mean? Like, these are some of the best recreations of that type of movie. There have been full-length films, like The Lost Skeleton of Cadavra, mm-hmm. you know, or somebody made a House of the Wolfman, right? Because nobody, there was a House of Dracula, a House of Frankenstein. They didn't yeah. do 
House of the Wolfman. So I think like they got Lon Chaney Jr.'s kid to be in it. Whatever. Roy Chaney. He's Lon Chaney House Jr. Of, Jr. Yeah. yeah. Um, but these recreations of old movies and it's just kind of like really heartfelt. And, you know, you kind of you see the appreciation of the love that these guys had for those uh, old films. And then, you know, some of the effects work and some of the gags are cool in the new stuff. Uh, I just don't necessarily think that the plot, um, you know, lands, but uh, I'm still going to recommend popcorn. You got to check it out at least as a curio of, uh, you know, 90s horror cinema. And unfortunately, yeah, I mean, it has gone kind of under the radar. Is it streaming somewhere? I don't know. I didn't check. It feels like it'd be on Amazon. These always end up on Amazon. Right. It's somewhere. I'm sure it's gone through them at some point. Yeah. But um yeah, I think uh, if you can check it out, and it's got an awesome poster that, you know, like I said, it uh, we've all said, I guess yeah. if you saw this back in the day, it's a poster you remember. It's a pretty cool poster art. Uh, you should check out Popcorn. Buy a bag and go home in a box. And I guess that's the end of that. Next week, there we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... John, what are we watching next week? Um, I think it's kind of kismet that uh, earlier in the podcast you were mentioning Freddy Krueger. Oh boy! Oh no! Oh boy! Because we are going to be watching 2010's A Nightmare on oh, the Street. Jesus <laughs> this you is are... Tammy the T Rex Revenge, isn't it? Why do you hate us? <laughs> I, no, I got we got thoughts, right? So we there'll be a thoughts. lot to talk about. There's obviously some passionate thoughts uh, behind yeah. this. Yeah. So I've avoided this movie since I saw it in the theater. <laughs> I don't think I've seen it since then either. I have not seen it, it since then. A so a decade, only, once a decade, we watched this movie. Since I've seen this movie. Yeah. This is the Jackie Earl Haley. <laughs> Yep. Abomination. Rooney Mara. On Elm Street. That's right. Before she was <laughs> yeah. Rooney Mara. Mm-hmm. That hasn't been yeah. a Freddy Krueger movie in 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was on uh, The Goldbergs. Robert yes. England. And it yeah. was he bad. Was part. Yes, yeah. he was. Okay, well, um, I hope you're looking forward to this <laughs> as much as we are. Next week, we're watching the remake, the Platinum Dunes, Michael Bay produced remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.